Martin and uh, I hope uh, like we can influence the, the race pretty good as a team and uh, in the end having one or two always in good position and uh, at least one in the GC. You think your, your opinion about your greatest concurrent? Yeah, I mean Big Dash showed today also in the product that they are going pretty strong but as, uh, as we said we also here with a, uh, we have a really strong team and we are not afraid and I hope we can have a a fun, uh, fun two more race days. Tomorrow you will wear another jersey. And uh, are you completely satisfied with, with your result today or are you expecting more? Um, I'm happy with my fifth place. Um, of course, as always now, a few places where I thought uh, maybe I could gain a little bit, but I mean, everybody probably has that. Um, I did my best and yeah, now we have two riders in top five and I think that's pretty good. Uh, the other team, uh, Chavalo, was very strong too. Are you surprised by the second place for, for Lisa? Ah, no, I'm not surprised. I think she showed already this year that she's in a good shape. Um, and yeah, it's really close in the top and everything can happen. Um, we'll just have to go out and uh, give a fight tomorrow. You think uh, your greatest concurrence in this race? So all, all remains possible? But but uh, you, you think that Chavilo will be your, your uh, strongest concurrent? Yeah, for sure they are their strong concurrent. Um, yeah, they show that today as well. Um, they show they, they ride good as, good as a team too. Um, but I think we have some strong riders here and we'll, yeah, we do our best and uh, hopefully we can, we can take over the leader's jersey with, with one, of the, one from my team. In fact, it's a little bit, a little bit sad for you, you're fourth. Uh, you're, you're not got a uh, distinctive dress directly, but you, uh, you will wear the other one tomorrow for procreation, so tomorrow you will wear the white one. Uh, but you look for another p p general classification or...? Um, I'll see what, the, what we decide to do with the team tactics. We haven't talked about it yet, um, but now we have a, a, a couple of riders placed in a good position. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see what we'll do. Um, yeah, I'll just do do the best we can, and uh, we'll see what what happens. The weather conditions were bad, but how you managed it? Um, for me, it stopped raining, but the roads were still kind of wet. Um, so you had to be a bit careful because uh, when we tried out the course just before, it's completely dry. Uh, so I didn't know how my my bike would react in all the corners. Um, so maybe I was a bit too careful, but yeah, that's that's cycling. Uh, we'll see how the weather is tomorrow. And uh, yeah. you didn't take all risk, all risks. No, maybe I could have gone a bit faster some places, um, but yeah, that's easy to say afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I did what I could uh, at that point. Um, yeah. I'm very happy with the result, and uh, no, I, I I didn't expect it, and. Uh, yeah, well, the the first part of the course, this um, little climb or also steep climb, um, yeah, I just went full gas and um, I had a look to the course. I did three laps and everything went well and my legs was good. So, yeah, I, I'm surprised and happy <laughs> with the results. But uh, the conditions were difficult. Uh, yeah, um, my start time was at seven, so um, the road was um, half dry, half wet. I think for sure it was an adventure. Um, um, adven Riders of 19 teams at the start, and we just uh, listened to the. Um, to some uh, to the riders from yesterday's prologue, um, we're looking right now at the GPM. Um, sorry, today's stage is is a very uh, hard stage. It's 97.7 kilometers, and that's actually from Steinfurt to Steinfurt. Yeah, we have got a reasonably. Um lumpy course around uh, the west of Luxembourg. We're right on the uh, border with Belgium, west of Luxembourg city itself. Um, the 97 kilometer stage, 97.7 kilometers indeed, uh, stage will take uh, the riders north from the start in, in uh, the, sorry, will take the riders east from the start towards Luxembourg city and doing a large 50 kilometer loop 
before heading back into Steinfort and starting again on a five laps of a uh, circuit, which is just under 10 kilometers. There are three um, Queen of the Mountain points on this particular race today. The first one is the one that you can see on your screens as we uh, view it now. And there are two more that are on the circuit. Though they climb that same hill five times, it only counts towards the Queen of the Mountains points on two of those occasions. So we just uh, saw the uh, first, yeah. and that climb is not really the toughest climb of the... Struggling off the back, um, whilst the professional riders at the front of the race um, are leaving them behind, essentially. Whether they'll come back before they reach the circuit, which isn't too far um, ahead, whether it will come back, I don't know, but um, um, I would have thought some of those riders are conclusively dropped. Yeah, from the top of the um, t from the top of the uh, GPM, the Queen of the Mountains point into the first. Um Although the weather condition has changed compared to last year, last year was a lot of rain. It was cold, and uh, today it's 14 to 16 degrees. It, the sun's out. It's just a great day. It's a massive contrast from both yesterday and last year's stage in this area. Um, you can see now on your on your pictures the the riders are heading down into uh, towards the valley I just mentioned. They'll uh, follow this right hand bend down and then turn right onto the valley which is possibly the most beautiful part of the circuit. Unfortunately we do not have pictures off the bike just yet and uh, I would suggest uh, we just go to a commercial break. Me, I love the descents here. The climbing not so much but the descents are just amazing here. But looking here at the uh, the finish line, we see a lot of we see a lot of cyclists here. People actually geared up to uh, to go to the race, and that's again that's that's good to see. Um, so, what did you like on this 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 last circuit? What do you like best? Is that the part in the valley, or is it actually the climbing? Because I didn't see you in the climb. You were far gone. I quite like the valley. I like getting a bit of speed up, and um, it's nice going through there. It really is nice going through there, uh, and it's beautiful. It is really beautiful. As you can see on your screens now, the peloton are coming for the... Oh, this is a replay. No, this is life. This is about 100 meters here from, um, from the finish line. And now uh, we're going into the second GPM right now. So we are at uh, 66 kilometers. And let me... Yeah, th this is this does not count towards the um, Queen of the Mountains com competition. Are you However, sure? it is the climb, so it doesn't count towards the. Queen oh, of it's the at mountains. the GPM, but it's not from the climb. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Sorry it's the same for that. Place. It's uh, chasing half from behind. I think that's WNT on the front. I, I imagine perhaps it's um, Katie Archibald leading the group through. We have uh, drops at the front there. Is that, I think that's uh, Suzanne Zorzi at the front um, and the French national team pushing hard. And the main protagonist at the front here, you see Ashley Moorman in a yellow jersey just out the saddle banging away there. And um, Bulls Dolman's marking her from behind. Lotta Lopisto has managed to stay into the in the group so far. You could see her just to punch as they in there. Significant gap coming for one of the from uh, Laris Waudeels. And it seems that uh, that's. Uh... Was it Flavia Oliveira? I think so, yeah. I think it was Flavia. She was dropped from the first. From the first yeah, group. that's unusual. She's a, an accomplished class. Sixth year. She did well in the Olympics, exactly. So it looks like the the um, the, the second part of this bunch is about 40, 50 seconds, and that's hand gap on this may not come back together with a forty-five second gap. 
and the quality of the riders at the front of the race are likely to push it on in order that they can um, consolidate their lead. Um, so I would imagine that gap might stay or even um, um, extend over the next few kilometres. So in which part of the race are there now? How many, how many kilometres do they still have to go? Yeah, they'll be coming up to the um, second passage of the um, finish line, which is at 60 kilometres with um, 37 kilometres yet to go. So they'll be approaching that in the uh, next few kilometres. And after they pass um, the fun, here's K before we hit the other GPM. On the circuit, I imagine that the, the, the nature of the circuit will cause um, that brake to remain established. Uh, it's quite a quick circuit, despite the climbs, it is quite a quick circuit and the, the riders will be able to, um, to uh, use the advantage of the group and to, to, as I say, to establish themselves in that break. And uh, looking into that third group, that is also 46 seconds behind the second group. So, um I was talking to the um, Great Britain team um, director this morning, Julian Wynne, um, about the Great Britain team and um, how a, a shift in focus for um, uh, for G Team GB um, to hopefully um, get more riders, more of the women concentrating on the roads. The team that he's got here is not a particularly accomplished team on the road, but um, he's hoping to develop that greatly over the uh, over the, the coming months and years and um, improve the quality of women's road cycling in, in Britain. Uh, there are a number of excellent riders, but uh, largely they've been produced by uh, their own work going to their own teams, European teams, as opposed to coming from uh, directly from a road program within British cycling itself. You can see the fixed camera here at the finish and Bulls Dolmans here uh, leading over the top of the uh, the climb that is immediately prior to the um, finish line. US national champion Megan Garnier was at the back there. We have um, WNT leading the, leading the pel peloton, very strong in the peloton with Bulls Dolmans. So, so we have approximately 40 kilometers left to race. And those uh, 40 kilometers is uh, pretty much equal to four laps. With regard to the uh, Queen of the Mountains comp uh, competition, obviously we had um, Lisa Klein first over the climb today. And we have a further two climbs. They're not actually categorized with different points um, awarded for different levels of severity of the climb. But um, first over the line for each of those classified climbs will get five points towards the classification. Second will get three points and third will get one. So as it stands, a sort of virtual leader of the blue jersey, the Queen of the Mountains competition, is Lisa Klein with Ashley Moorman Passio second and, um, and uh, Christine Majerus, who is the local Luxembourg champion, uh, in third place in that classification. So now we're waiting for the, uh, the, the second part of this peloton and we're looking at um, Sarah Mustone in there in second position and they're about 46 seconds behind the first group but by the looks of it that first group is actually racing really hard so I think that uh, that advantage will only get bigger and bigger. I was talking, and another person I was talking to this morning was in fact Sarah Mustonen, who is riding here for the uh, Velo Concept team, a Danish team that has um, come out of uh, uh, a, a lesser team, a Danish team. Um, and they have a mainly Scandinavian outfit, though uh, Amber Naben, the, um, the uh, world time trial champion, is also on that uh, team. Um, they are yet to get uh, a podium, and she was saying the team are disappointed but they had expected it to be difficult to uh, for them to all gel together um, uh, and she feels that, that, that they're just on the verge of achieving some results um, which would be good because we need a, a bigger spread of teams that are able to win and to challenge in, in uh, races. But she was, um, was she last yesterday? Miss Stoner was last yesterday I believe. 
Yeah, she was the last rider, rider to, last rider on uh, the classification yesterday to finish so what in. What happened in, to her? Did you, did you I talk didn't to her about ask that? her that. No, no. Because she she is not the best time trialist, but she is she's supposed to be in. I would say in the first 30, 40 riders. Yeah, she's a strong rider normally. And though I didn't ask her, there must have been some issue with her. Uh, there was some talk at the start about how difficult the start of that uh, time trial was. People were a bit, um, some of the younger riders were a bit awestruck when they saw uh, essentially a wall going up in front of them. It was uh, quite funny to hear some of the comments. And, and, and it was. Um, we also talked to uh, Megan Guarnier. Um, I really hoped that she was doing pretty well yesterday, but she lost more seconds than I wanted to. But going up that climb for her was, she would get into a pace really fast, but she lost it on the corners because you, what she said, you either win or you crash. Yeah, I mean, she flew up that climb and, and looked absolutely fabulous. She looked so smooth and completely untroubled by, by the gradient. Um, but she was having to stop, uh, or to, to stop, to slow down for those corners because they were wet. And having had a significant period, lost a significant period of her season to uh, injury with concussion, she didn't want to lose any more. So, um, so she had to take it a bit easy. Um, though she's certainly not going to be taking it easy for the rest of the weekend. We're going to take a small commercial break and we'll be right back. And we're back with you. You can see that group is uh, significantly reduced now. Uh, obviously, that's one of the chasing groups and uh, all sitting rather comfortably, comfortably on the back of one of those team cars. And, gonna and heading towards the um, back of the circuit into the valley where they'll be taking on the uh, climb. And the, and the second one of the day, which counts towards the Queen of the Mountains blue jersey com uh, competition. You can see there in those pictures just what the countryside's right, uh, like round here. Woods, lovely green fields, and uh, some nice villages. Yes, it, it, it is amazing. The whole, the whole area here um, with, with, the, with the little villages and the small water streams, and it, it is just amazing. And I have to say the weather helps. Yeah, the weather helps. I think had it been like last year, we would have been thankful to, sit, um, to be out of the rain. One of the drops riders off the back there, I can't quite see who that is. British, uh, British team sponsored by a uh, wallpaper company, hence the rather striking looking kit. I think it looks absolutely fabulous. Um, it does, the colours are great. Yeah, the, uh, the company are, uh, are used to designing things. I've spoken to the team manager, Bob Varney, and uh, about it. It's a fantastic looking piece of uh, kit. Um, we, we just talked about British cycling. There are a lot of national teams here. So what do you think they will gain from this? Again, experience. Uh, the Norwegian team perhaps are, aren't a team that need experience. There are, uh, a number of their riders have plenty of it already, and uh, uh, three of them racing with high-tech products. Um, you also have in that team uh, Gunrita Dala, who is one of the, the most acclaimed and awarded uh, mountain bike riders ever. It's good to see her here, though, Yeah, on a road bike. Yeah. It, it is amazing. Yeah, and I, stuck to, I, I talked to Taya Thorson this morning, and she said, well, we have three riders uh, here who ride in the same team of high-tech products. And it, it's good to see the other um, Norwegian women there as well. And, and you know, we, we need to bind together and become a team because at the end of the year, you have to ride in a national colors. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's quite helpful. If, if you, however, you were to look at the GB team, they are a development team, uh, and they are to feed riders into into trade teams at a later stage. And that much the same could be said of uh, the, the French national team, for instance. All of whom are, are young, and all of whom will be looking, hopefully, to join some trade teams. Um, uh, 
the main French trade team in uh, women's cycling at the moment is um, FDJ uh, Nouvelle Aquitaine Futur Futuroscope, and they've done really well this year um, so far. Uh, yes, they have. But you also see that the, the, the quality of racing is going up. Yeah. I mean, you see here at the front, um, you see the pace is really, really going up. And those, those smaller teams, and especially those, those young rider, development riders, um, the, the national teams, um, they tend to stay behind, but it, it doesn't need to discourage them because they're racing right here and they gain experience from it. Yeah, I think some of the cars here are a little bit too close to the peloton, despite the foreshortening of the camera uh, of the uh, camera. Act. Um, but you can see they're racing for the top of this uh, climb now. This uh, does count towards the uh, classification for the Queen of the Mountains. This uh, particular pass of the line, of the uh, top of the climb. We're just about to see who wins it, providing the cars get out of the way. And who's going to emerge from the crowd here? That guy doesn't seem to care too much. <laughs> and there's a little sprint going on. They're going yeah. on the pedals to see who is winning the first GPM, second GPM, I'm sorry. And that seems to be a rider from Ljubljana. Moorman in third position, uh, fifth position. And now we just wait for the results. There's a couple of riders come back to that group, I believe. That group is a little bit bigger than the last time we saw it. We're just waiting on the results from there. Um, we see what you do. So now they have about three kilometers before they um, go into Steinfort again and will enter their third lap. So we have number 53, that is Anna Zita Maria Stricker, like I said, from uh, uh, BTC City, Ljubljana. And then we have number 44, that's Tichana Riebechko of Lensworth, Kuota. And number 15 is the third one, and that is Marie Vilman. And it looks like um, if she keeps keep finishing on you know the first three four, yeah, that gives her four point. Um, sorry, six points in the classification, I believe. Um, so she's certainly consolidating her place there. And you can see um, <coughs> Katie Archibald, the uh, British Olympi uh, Olympian in a WNT kit, coming over the top of the climb there. At least she find a group again and not riding alone. I think she quite probably quite like just smashing it. Yeah. She, yeah, she strikes me as that sort of woman that she just enjoys putting the pain on whoever she can. <laughs> so we talked to uh, Heidi van der Viver this morning of Lens World Quota, and uh, she also said, well, we just have to wait and see what's going on. The only thing we can do right now is, is talk to riders and show their faces, you know, uh, be aggressive in riding. And, and absolutely make sure that you know, that we're trying to go for the GPMs. Mm -hmm. And um, and actually that's what they're showing because they have Anna Zita Maria Stricker down there. And um, well, she did actually pretty well. And looking at those faces, you can actually see that this, this, this mountain is really hurting. I mean, even if you look all the way to the right of your screen down there, it is a it is a big climb. Do you know how 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 what what the percentage is of this climb? It's certainly steep. Um, I do have the percentage somewhere. It's not in the road book, but it is it is steep in the middle. Uh, I understand that the uh, percentage goes over ten percent in the middle, but not for very long. It's um it it's long enough to have to suffer up, but uh, not so long that um that uh, will cause significant gaps. And hopefully those two guys in the middle will uh, get pull off the road and tell them that they have to wear a helmet. 
And now we're back in Steinfurt, where we're waiting for the first group to finish and enter the third passage. Yeah, once they pass the line um, here, they will have 28.2 kilometers to go. I'm just waiting for the peloton to come over the crest of the hill. We see um, photographer Sean Ramazan having a good time. The little hill pri immediately prior to the line it, it is short and steep. It's a, it's a, a big ring sprint climb um, that will see the, um, the riders out of the, out of the saddle sprinting over the top. They just come over the line there with number four. So we have... Um, with number four, who is uh, Caroline Canuel um, crossing the line first there, leading the peloton over the top. Caroline um, is uh, a Canadian rider who's been um, with the team now. This is her second, te uh, second year with this uh, team. And I think I saw um, Kasia Pavlovska as well there. She is the uber, uber domestique of the team. I think every rider who won something has, has to thank Kasia. Yeah, I think so. Um, maybe, maybe some of the other riders are listening in after the tour of Yorkshire today, so they perhaps tell us. But um, yeah, Cassia puts uh, an immense amount of work in, and, and um, maybe was missed at the beginning of the season. She was out with uh, an injury that she sustained, but um, yeah, and, and she's such a lovely uh, young lady as well, always smiling, except for when she's putting the pain on on the bike. But it seems that she actually loves that pain because she's doing so well on, on, on these climbs. And I think for her, is the longer climbs suit her better than, than the shorter climbs. And then she can actually really put her, her, you know, her efforts in it and, and work for whoever needs to, to win in that race. I'd just like to see her win more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, she's a, uh, I think we said yesterday she's as accomplished on the track She's a highly accomplished track rider. Um, however, um, she doesn't tend to win an awful lot on the, on the road. Um, and she's only raced seven days before this race so far this year. Um, but has raced here at uh, the festival, festival Elsie Jacobs before finishing um, 16th. Um, Sorry, I, I, I tell a lie. 21st on the uh, last year's edition and was fourth in the stage um, that we'll see tomorrow into uh, Garnish, which is the home of the um, which is the home of the race, really. It's uh, always been based in the village or in or around the village of Garnish. Garnish. The second bunch just passed uh, the finish line here in, uh, in Steinfurt and I was actually pulled by uh, Team Britain. Yes, yes, I certainly think that um, Julian Wynn will be pleased with their performance. They're working hard on the front. There were three uh, of their riders on the front pushing the, pushing the group along. It's, it's good to see that, um, that um, they are working very hard and not sitting in being satisfied. And also our team uh, Velo Concept was in, was in, that, in that group. Um, and it looks like they, um, they actually work pretty hard. Hopefully they get back to the first bunch at least. I mean, they have almost a minute behind the first group and the first group is actually accelerating and they're growing faster and faster. And the cream is coming to the top there. You can clearly see that the top riders have made it into that front group and, and then uh, as with any sporting competition. But uh, again, those riders don't need to be discouraged. You have to stay in the second group and race for your position there and, and maybe even finish like you were f finishing for victory You're racing for the line and, and that's what it's about whether it's you know, it's good to see riders racing for the line whether it's for first uh, or a hundred and first for instance it is racing after all uh, these riders aren't out for a, a sunday afternoon um saturday afternoon stroll so we see here uh, tara gins of lars wow deals it looks like she's hurting hurling hurting on that climb now we actually make our way up to um, 
to that to the climb again we go into the valley and that group is is bigger than 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 the beginning you're yeah. right yeah after the um after the finish line um they drop down um into uh, a, a, another village um the village of uh, hobschgeider and uh, they drop down to the village where they turn right to what point where you just saw them um so that's where some riders that may may uh, have lost out on the uh, hillier approach into the finish line will be getting back onto the group before at least the the, the um Queen of the Mountains climb, which will be coming up soon. This is the last one of the day that will uh, that will count towards the classification. So I would imagine that you will see um, Marie Villman up there for her uh, Cervelo Bigler team in in order that they secure a uh, in order that they secure a jersey for the end of the day. We do apologize that we don't have any footage from the motorbike. Unfortunately, there are some technical issues, so we have the footage, and we actually see, now I say it, we actually have some footage of the bike. Speak, and you will see. Yeah, there that's fantastic. Go, we can actually see within the race now. So we have, we have the first group, and the second group is a minute 30 behind. Yeah. Uh, they will probably not make it to the first bunch. But they won't make it to the first bunch. The, 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 the course is not hugely technical, but it is technical enough uh, to ensure that a gap of that um, magnitude will not be, bro be brought back before uh, the end of the race, which after all is only in uh, 23 kilometers time. And uh, we are looking at the back of the first group. So we have about three laps to go. I think I think the uh, the the perspective you have there is slightly misleading. It, it, it looks like they're nearly stood still. They won't be stood still. That is downhill with perfectly smooth tarmac. Uh, they were flying down there. You can see some of the, the body language is really quite um, relaxed because they're not having to work to, to achieve that speed. Just at the front, I could see um, Lotta Lepisto, the Finnish champion, riding for Cervelo Biglow, is uh, still there at the front of the group. So I would suggest that she will remain there um, and uh, maybe even uh, contest the win um, on a stage that she won last year here in the pouring rain. The only thing she has to do is, uh, is stay in the wheel of, uh, of some riders and don't, don't put a lot of effort in it so she will save all her energy for the finale. Yeah. And this is actually the, the second chasing group. Yeah, the, the, the front group are, are well ahead of that and will be heading, on, uh, heading towards the, um, the base of that uh, Queen of the Mountains climb that will be coming up very, very shortly. So now we're waiting for the GPM. Um, let's uh, maybe go to a little commercial break. And we're back, right at the three kilometer mark. This will be keenly contested, I have no doubt. And I also imagine that v uh, Marie Villeman will be way up there trying to, to uh, ensure that she ends the day wearing the uh, Queen of the Mountains blue jersey. And we are uh, racing in uh, Luxembourg. So we have, um, let's see where some Luxembourg riders are. We have, of course, Christine Majeru in the first group, um, and in the, uh, together with Maas. And then we have uh, Faber, Harsh, and Ries. 
in the uh, second group, and we have Chantal Hoffmann in the third group. So they're not doing so bad. Not doing too bad. Here we are again. Is that um, Anna Stricker at the front there? If it is, she, if it is, she will take the blue jersey. And I didn't see um, uh, Marie Vilman in there. Did you? No, I haven't. I haven't seen her. Let's let's wait for the results. Yeah, and I but think it was good to see that uh, that that the riders were fighting for the uh, for the GPM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good to see. And it looks like maybe that was Tachana Ryabchenko as well, going for those going right. for those points. Let's wait for the results. And here come the second bunch. They're right at the bottom of the valley there, They're just heading into the climb. But uh, they're certainly not coming back. We have uh, 25 riders in that uh, first group. So we have uh, number 53. That was uh, Anazita Maria Stricker. She uh, won that Queen of the Mountain, uh, followed by uh, Tatiana Repchenko and uh, Ashley uh, Ashley Moman Pasio was third there. So you do your calculations on points. Yeah, it's Stricker's now one two, so that gives her ten points, and um, I think that will safely see her in the in the um, in the blue jersey come the end of the day, awarded on the podium after the uh, after the race is concluded, obviously. And that's good for um, that's good for the team. That's good for uh, Ljubljana. It is good for the team. It certainly is. Yeah, it gets a, a lesser known team on the podium, and obviously with this coverage that. Uh, you're watching now it, it gives um, the rest of the world the opportunity to see some of those lesser known teams and it might be a goal for them as well to uh, to get a jersey to get a jersey yeah. Yeah. so they're on the podium you know like you said to show themselves but also that, that to show that they can fight for a target mm. we talked about the GB team uh, leading um, this second group across the line you see the French team are leading the uh, group across the top of the climb, which is fantastic to see some of the junior, well, more junior riders that uh, are taking responsibility for their racing. And it looks like uh, the second and third group uh, merged, and uh, it, it, it looks like the speed is going up in that, um, in that part of the peloton. So the uh, front group will be approaching the um, finish line in Steinfort here in Steinfort, to for the fourth time now, when they cross the line, they'll have um, just under 19 kilometers to race. And they will be climbing, uh, going up that climb two more times, though they won't count towards the Queen of the Mountains competition. So that was the, um, the last Queen of the Mountain? Yes, it was, yeah. All the motorbikes are passing us here at the finish now that you can see them you can see that the top of the climb comes you know with 100 meters to go so it doesn't make it a pure sprint it makes it a sprint for someone uh, for a proper power rider so I know you uh, you like predictions who do you predict wins this race looking at the first group um, I will reserve judgment for another few seconds until they pass us. All right. Uh, All right. Uh, is that okay? No, that's perfectly fine. That's yeah, perfectly I, fine. I hate predicting because I, 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 I'll be humiliated every time. <laughs> <laughs> what W and T are approaching us um, with? Uh, is that Park Hotel on the front there as well? Yeah, I believe it is. I believe There's it is. There's a lot of riders looking comfortable in there. Uh, that's really good to see. That's Park Hotel, Park Hotel at the front. There's Hayley Simmons, the uh, British WNT. National Time Trial that's Champion. Ashley Passio, Moman Passio in the third. Very, very secure third position down there. Did you see Lotta Lopisto? She's still secure in there. I'm going to go for her. Yes. 
I have to be, I have to be, um, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going for that. Um, <laughs> I, d I, I wanted to say Lepisto as well, but just because you said it, I'm, I'm, I'm gambling. Lepisto has spring form. She won Ghent Bergen by, by a tyre's width. I think we said this yesterday. Uh, and th that week she also won the uh, Dwarz d'Or uh, Philander. And, um, she has spring form. Um, there are other riders with spring form. Sorry, who did you say? Uh, who is your pick? Well, I'm, I'm hoping for, um, for uh, Pavlovska. Pavlovska. Yeah, I'm maybe. hoping for maybe. it. Maybe. She was sat in there. She wasn't on the front, so maybe saving her legs. Saving a little energy. I think... Um, the finish line has a bonus time, um, bonus uh, time for the general classification awarded. So I think uh, teams will be looking to put up uh, their GC riders to win the stage in order that they gain maximum time. I would suggest that um, that uh, Bulls Dolmans we put putting uh, Amelia uh, Didierickson um, on the front there to try and take the sprint. Um, which will put her into the, possibly if she takes 10 seconds, into the lead of the race on GC. Uh, depends obviously where uh, Mulma Pasio comes and Lisa Klein, but... And also, um, you know, do you want to wear that yellow jersey or your rainbow jersey? Yeah, I think she'd rather win the race on GC. That's also uh, true. Um, let's uh, go to a uh, small commercial break and uh, we'll be right back. And welcome back, and you can just see um, the uh, rearmost group in front of the ambulance crossing the line here in Steinfort. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in to this um, live stream, today's stage is a 97.7 kilometer stage starting in the village of Steinfort in the western Luxembourg and finishing here as well. There are three um, classified climbs, though one of those uh, particular hills is climbed on five occasions. The peloton split into two parts on the first um, first of those um, classified climbs and uh, we now have 25 riders in a front group with a lead of, I'm looking at my colleague, 2 minutes and 30 seconds. A lead of 2 minutes and 30 seconds and uh, with just around 16 kilometers left to race that gap is not going to come back so it'll be that front group of 25 riders that will contest the finish that front group also contains all the riders um, who we expect to contesting who we would have expected to contest the finish both on this stage and in the just general classification overall we just uh, saw the passage of the second group, and all the way in the back was uh, Yip van der Bos. And I have to be—I have to tell you that I am surprised that she is in that second group. Um, we talked to her to this morning, and, and and she was actually really looking forward to this race. Um, she is absolutely a big talent for Holland. She is a big talent. She did very very well yesterday. Um, she finished seventh, only eight seconds behind the winner Ashley uh, Mulman Passio. So that that was a particularly good. Um, uh, finish for her. I appreciate it's only a 2.8. It was only a 2.8 kilometer um, prologue, but it was a good finish for a young woman who has uh, only recently stepped up to that level of team. But uh, she also said, you know, this was in a prologue like this. This is for me the time to shine. The rest of the stages, I have to work for the um, for the team, and 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 on a prologue like this, yes, it is short, but. It gives her the opportunity to, to showcase herself, and she did extremely well for a young girl like her. Like her. Yes, definitely. I, when she joined the team, um, team manager Danny Stam told me that, um, that uh, he didn't really know what, what to expect from her. She, he had recruited her to the team because she fitted in as a personality and also obviously for her cycling prowess but she fitted in with the characters of the team and that's an interesting concept that you have to have a balance of people who can 
contribute towards the dynamic within the team. Um, I think that's nearly as important as having uh, masses of talent. And she's enjoying it as well. Um, last year she was Parker Tell Valkenburg. Um, and, and this year her training is structured, the racing is structured, everything around the race is structured. And she said, I'm enjoying this. And, and this way I can focus more on, on racing and on, on helping other others in the team. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's certainly a step up from a team like Park Hotel to, to go from a team that finished um, somewhere uh, 15 to 20th in the, in the um, UCI rankings to go to the by far and away the best team um, in the women's peloton it, it is a step up for a, a young woman like her. What I am interested to see is to see um, who that Cervelo Bigler will put up to win this stage. I, I would suggest that it will want to win the stage with Lotto Lopisto. But that may cause them to lose the yellow jersey of Ashley Moorman, depending on how much she has to work to put Lepisto in, 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 uh, in a position to win it. It will be interesting to see where their ambition is. Also, we spoke um, to the uh, Bulls Dolman's uh, DS, uh, Bram Sivens, yesterday, didn't we? And, and, and he was saying they were hoping for Christine Majerus, the local rider, to, to win GC here. So. Will they be sprinting for her, or will they be sprinting for uh, the world champion Amelia uh, Diederichsen? Well, they're both in the first group. Yeah. Who do you pick? Uh, to be honest, I would pick Christine Majerus. She is good, she is in form, uh, and she's local. Yeah, I think I personally agree with you. They, they have to go with Christine, um, she, and she can do well on uphill sprints, as she has uh, proved before. Uh, I think it was in 2015 where she won a stage of the um, women's tour, the Aviva women's tour in um, Kettering, which was an uphill sprint. I think we were having coffee at the time, Niels. Yes, we did. Yeah. Um, she won a stage there in 2015, and I do believe she has another stage of the um, the, the Aviva Women's Tour to her credit as well. Uh, yeah, she won stage one last year in Norwich, ahead of uh, Mariana Voss, I believe, with a, a deft piece of bike handling, um, sticking her bike right up the inside of Voss as she tipped into the corner, right, that's and right. out sprinting her. It was a fantastic win. <laughs> Uh, that day perhaps was more noticeable for um, the performance of uh, Alison Tetrick, the American rider, who uh, riding for Silence, who was in a break on her own for ages. For, exactly uh, until and was the last with about 300 meters. 300 to go, meters to go, and she also was, had a broken rib. Yeah, she was crushed. Yeah. She was crushed after I talked to her afterwards. It was really hard to talk to her at the time because you know the only thing she can. She was about to to shed into tears yeah. because you know she really thought this is going to be my win. She was in the lead pretty much the whole stage, and then to be caught in the last 300 meters. I, I think that's one of the beautiful things about sport, though, is it is the heartbreak and the success. And and I spoke to Alison the day after, and um, she could barely speak to me with tears in her eyes. That so close was it to to that glorious victory, and p though perhaps it was the pain of the broken rib as well. I think she abandoned the last stage, but it was an incredible feat just to get to the finish of the first, let alone. And she never got over it. Um, um, she rode a, a couple of other races, and, and she was always somewhere in the back. And, and her rib was so painful that she couldn't you know, have the right performance. And she's racing right now in, uh, in the U.S., in, uh, yeah, in Gila. To, uh, yeah, to yeah Gila. exactly. It'd be good to see her over in Europe again. So we're at the uh, three kilometer mark right now. So that means um, we are at the 88 kilometer mark, if I'm correct. We have um, a lap and a half to go, I believe, Niels. So that means we're at the uh, 83. Yeah, yeah. We're about at the 83 kilometer mark. That means 14 kilometers to go. 12.4, I think you'll find. 12.4. Yeah. Just at a guess, 12.4. Might be 12.39. I'm not quite, not entirely sure. <laughs> certain. So um, while we wait for them to um, to cross the finish line, let's go to a commercial break.
And we see the riders coming up the uh, three kilometer mark. Or is this the second group? No, this is the second group. Before we went away to that commercial break, I, I, I thought I saw the yellow, yellow yellow jersey looking a bit feisty on the front of the group. It'll be interesting to see what's um, what's happened when we get the pictures back here here at the finish to see whether or not uh, Ashley Moorman has tried to break clear. That would certainly certainly uh, put the cat amongst the pigeons uh, and cause bulls to have to chase. I apologize for uh, not having a motorcycle uh, camera on the motorcycle. Um, hopefully that problem will be fixed tomorrow and we will have more... Um, or more pictures from the motorbike in the race itself. See a split in that group as well with a, a third group trying to come back. Come back. Would be good if we can, uh, if they were merge. They're not riding it hugely quickly. You'll see the guy, the uh, the uh, rider there from um, Velo Concept on the front. We started this morning with 109 riders, but um, tomorrow we will not start 109 riders. No. We have some riders already taken out of the uh, out of the race. Sarah, Sarah Mastonen. Yeah. And in front of us, the bell is ringing, and uh, the motorcycles are starting to come past the finish line as uh, the remainder of the group, the the front group, will be um, beginning their final lap. You can see a, a nice plastic glass of beer there uh, served from the bar just behind us along with the burgers and the uh, variety of sausages and buns um, I would call them hot dogs but they're not pure hot dogs and I had a red one and it was very tasty indeed I had the white one it was really good yeah yeah so we're going up to uh, the last lap here in festival Elsie Jacobs last lap that means they have under 10 kilometers to go. Yeah. When they cross, cross the line on this occasion, they'll have 9.4 k's, 9.4 kilometers to go. Is that a rider attacking off the front there? No, no. Park Hotel leading the peloton, Bulls Dolman's third wheel, and uh, WNT second wheel, wasn't it? Yes, and we see a little gap between um, um, Ashley Mulman Passio and her rider before. I couldn't see who that was. We saw um, Caroline. Carol Ann uh, in, in the front. Mm. She's working for um, probably Majerus. I would say Majerus, yeah. yeah. It's good to see a team like Park Hotel uh, having ambition, mm. trying, to, trying to break the bunch. Absolutely. That's a fantastic thing to see. Well, perhaps in um, World Tour races, which are the ones you might be more likely to see uh, either live streamed or live on television. Um, they wouldn't get the opportunity to try and uh, be aggressive in a race. In one of these races, uh, a 2.1 event, they uh, have that opportunity to try and dictate to the finish of a race, which is fantastic. So in the front fr group, we have, um, from Bulls Dolmans, we have Paloska, we have Hanuel, we have Majerus in that first group, and also uh, Megan Guarnier. Of the um, Cervelo Bigla, we have Lotta Lepisto, uh, Ashley Moorman Passio, we have um, Stephanie Paul in there, and we have Lisa Klein in that first group. Then of Lars Wildeals, we have Sophie De First in that group. Uh, we also have um, Maria Artsufi from Lance World Quota in there, and together with Maria Giulia Confalinieri. Um, actually, Tachana Guderzo is also in that group, plus Tachana Repchenko. So Lance World Quota is, is also in, in that group with four riders. Um, from Ljubljana, we have Bujak and um, um, Anna Zita Maria Stricker. We have Corina Lechner and Ursa Pintar in that group. They have a uh, lead of three minutes and 20 seconds now, that group. So <coughs> they've managed to establish themselves very, very conclusively. Um, tomorrow's course is far more selective, and um, we could see far greater gaps um, in tomorrow's stage, which um, is a, a longer stage starting in Garnish and finishing in Garnish, but it's certainly a longer stage than today's with 111.1 um, kilometers. 
Yeah, we just talked about um, the, 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 the club teams that are also riding here. Looking at this first group, we have, let's see, two riders of uh, WV Sales Flandre in there. And, and that's good to see. And that is uh, Daniela Christmas and um, Nancy Vandenberg in that first group. And that's good for the team. It is certainly good for the team, for, for young women to be able to, to battle it out with, um, with some of the top teams in the world. Daniela Christmas um, is not an unusual Dutch name. It's, uh, she's a British woman that's uh, racing out in, uh, in uh, Belgium. Exactly. Um, and we have uh, some riders of the national French team and the national Norwegian team in that first group. Just uh, riding past us, who is um, uh, abandoning the race, is uh, Madeleine uh, Diesner of the Develop Cloud Cycle Cafe team, which is a German um, club team. And, in f and the group coming through that main group is just passing us now. And it looks like that group is is, is bigger and bigger, so they yeah. must have picked up yeah. some other riders along the way. So we're under nine kilometers to go before the finish of this first stage in festival Elsie Jacobs. And here you can see they're going into the valley. The finale is on. It wouldn't surprise me if the gap will start to come down a little bit now, as there's a little bit of finessing amongst that front group, and they're setting up their uh, setting up their riders and teams starting to look at each other. Certainly, Cervelo Bigler don't have their entire uh, complement of six women in that front group. Um, I'm not sure whether um, Bulls Dolmans do. Do they have all six of their riders in that front group? No, four. No. So neither team is at full strength to uh, set their sprinter up for the, uh, this final. It'll be interesting to see how it develops. And we miss uh, Yip van der Bos in that, uh, in that first group. And I don't see number one, Amelia Diederiksen, in that group. No. To be honest, I haven't seen her in a while. She will be significantly disappointed that she didn't make that group, I imagine. I have to be honest, I haven't seen her in the second group as well. No. But it also could be because we're looking for the rainbow stripes yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and it is a white jersey that she's wearing. So we're coming up to the um, last climb of the La Montée Sortie in Curich. And it's not for the GPM, but it is the last climb before we actually going straight into the finale yeah, to the finish line. And it comes with three kilometers to go, so there will be. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they cross the line and um, what's going on amongst the teams, and whether we have groups of orange and groups of um, uh, white, blue and red together, trying to set up their riders for the win. And it's going to be interesting to see who's winning. Is it Lotto Lapisto who won this stage last year? Might be the Luxembourg rider Christine Machereus of Bulls Dolmans that um, take the stage here. We will see in a couple of minutes. It's good to see a lot of crowds here at the finish line in um, here in uh, in Luxembourg. Of course, the weather also helps. Uh, you know, we see some people sitting down to the climb. We see some people just standing here at the finish line, just having fun and just watch these women work hard as hard as, as they can. And there's all ages as well, which is what I like. There, there, there. Just to our left, there uh, is a family. A mom and four children, is that? And husband standing with his hands in his pockets. It, it, the whole family has come out to watch this race, whether they've, they live in the village. You also have um, older men, middle-aged men, middle-aged women, every age is here to, to watch the race. And maybe it's a, an occasion in the village, but I suspect people have come from further afield as well. Uh, and there are plenty of cyclists who have ridden here to see the race as well.
So we are at the finish line of this first stage and in a couple of minutes we will probably see the riders come up for the last climb and that is three kilometer mark before we go onto the finish straight. We see the first of uh, the police motorcycles um, going into that corner. That means the riders will not be far away. And where where would be the right moment to, if you want to go, what now. would be the mark? Now. Unfortunately, we'll we cannot be to attack see that. up the climb. It would be Ashley Moore and Passio attacking up the climb. She can climb. She's massively aggressive. Uh, to, if she wants to get away, now is the time to try and do it. But that I suggest also comes down to the tactics. Yeah, I suggest, of course, that the climb isn't quite long enough for her to, to drop people like uh, Megan Guarnier. Um, and the course is perhaps, for today's stage at least, not quite selective enough to um, to to allow a rider to get away from a group of 25, especially if a team behind her is organized. Um, tomorrow's course, as we've already said, um, is that kind of course. And um, Cassia uh, Nivia Doma won on this same, uh, on tomorrow's route by 47 seconds, a, a lone breakaway. So I think uh, that will be where we see any lone tax today. Today is set up perfectly for a, a, a sprint from a group of 25. I think the man in the Saab needs to get off the course. And here come the peloton, led by Bulls Dolmans by the look of that. And the pace is considerably higher than the last time they came around that corner and headed <coughs> into this climb. And we see the first rider of uh, Bulls Dolmans um, um, getting off from the front, she has done her work and we see Ashley Mulman Passio in the middle, she's getting on the pedals and on the left side there is, is, is going to be an attack, unfortunately we cannot see everything because of the blue car, but in a minute they will reach the three kilometer mark, three kilometers to go for the finish. And This is a full on sprint up this climb and there is a lot of jostling for position either to escape or alternatively to set the teams uh, up for the uh, final. We see some on the drops girls in this first group. In the front, we see a Norwegian champion down there. That's Gunrita Dahl, isn't it? Ashley Moorman leading out there, leading over the top of the hill. I would suggest then that the, they're going for Lepisto to win the stage. Megan Garnier in the U US national champions um, jersey. In uh, fourth position, and this is on the uh, GPM. And that means we have just three under kilometers. three kilometers to go. There's two of um, Moorman Passio's teammates have uh, been dropped in that little trio off the back there. Whether that will impact on their uh, ability to set, uh, set up the final, we don't know. And uh, is this one of the Bulls Dolmans riders being dropped? Well, she has done yeah. her work yeah. um, in, that, in that climb, I launching. Yeah, Caroline Canuel, wasn't it? I think it was Caroline. tirelessly. I think it was Canuel, and um, she she worked really hard for that climb, and she probably go for measures. That's my that's my guess. Yeah. And now we have uh, in excess of three minutes to wait um, prior to the next group coming over. Um, I would suggest it will be right on the finish by then. By then. The pace they came over the climb. So we're going into the last two kilometers before we finish. Are you going to ask me to confirm my, my, uh, my <laughs> guess here? No, I'm not. We'll have to see you in just about two yeah. kilometers. Yeah. We're at the finish line here in Steinfurt. Who was it I said? You said uh, La Pisto. Yeah. You wrote it down. Oh, did I? You circled it. No, I didn't. <laughs> I never write anything down. That's why I can't remember anything. <laughs> Just under two kilometers to go. That guy does finish. not want to be coming out, to, out of there because the peloton is going to be coming straight towards him in a minute. But it will be led by a uh, police, I imagine. 
We have 1.5 kilometers before the finish. Who will win this first stage? And the front cars are just coming over the line. The front police uh, police vehicle is coming over the line. The guy has not quite finished his beer. You can see just there on the finish line. You're looking forward with that one. Uh, you're buying, I believe. Yes, I am. Depends who's winning, though. Last kilometer, last kilometer. We will have a very good idea who's going to win the stages when we see them come. All his beer is empty now. Did he drink it or spill it? No, I probably half of it spilled it. Disgusting. I should go out and have a word with him. And there's the police motor. That means the uh, the group is not far away. So a couple of hundred meters before we can see him come up this climb, this is up the finish line. It's a shame technical issues have, have mean that we cannot quite see the the, the final. But um, I always get very excited at this part of a bicycle race, even if I'm following it on Twitter. I find it exciting. So under a kilometer to go. In seconds, you're going to see the uh, the leading group leading up and over the climb and towards the finish line. Here they come. Here they come now. Here they come to the finish line. And it is... It is... Isn't it Christine Majerus? I think it is Christine Majerus wearing the blue... Wearing a blue jersey. Yes. Christine Majerus wins here Fantastic. in her country. Fantastic. With a seconds gap. And that should give her the uh, general classification lead. She was uh, third on yesterday, only three seconds down. Um, and with um, the 10 second um, bonification, as uh, a great commentator sometimes says, then, um, then that should put her in the yellow jersey going into tomorrow's stage. Unfortunately, I didn't see who was uh, second and no. third. It's the first stage that uh, Christine Majerus has won in this race. Um, and it's fantastic to see a local rider winning, uh, winning the stage. And we believe it's um, Eugenia Bujak who Bujak, finished uh, that's an second of uh, Ljubljana. That's really good. Yeah. And uh, we just got confirmed that Ashley Moulman Passio is third. Is third. So Ashley Moulman Passio will get a four second um, bonus. But um, Majerus, with a uh, 10 second bonus, will put her into the yellow jersey as she started the day with only a uh, three second deficit. So we have a Luxembourg winner today, which is great for Luxembourg. Uh, for Bulls Dolmans, Christine Majerus is winning the first stage. We have Eugenia Bujak of uh, CTC City Ljubljana in the second place, and Ashley Moomin Passio of Cervelo Bigler is third. It confirms the Cervelo Bigler ta tactics, though, and that is that they are going for Moomin Passio as the GC rider. Um, and it will be interesting going into tomorrow's stage to see how they take that and whether Majerus can um, uh, counter Ashley Moorman Passio and the uh, steeper climbs that um, that you'll see uh, on tomorrow's stage. We understand that um, hopefully we will have full uh, motorbike coverage tomorrow, so you will be able to see more of the stage than you have seen on today's uh, event. Uh, w w on the climbs, you can see that Masher is really, you know, had the right pace. She didn't look fatigued at all, so that gives good comfort for tomorrow as well. It certainly, it certainly does, and. Um, it was a good race, and it was good to see some of the smaller teams um, doing so well. Um, with BTC Ljubljana doing um, doing well in the um, the final, they're getting second place. And uh, as you've already described, the presence of other other of uh, the smaller teams in that front group of just 25 riders.
which is great. We see on the drops girls in that uh, first group. We also see national teams on that uh, first group, and that is really good to see. I wonder if that's going to stay the same thing tomorrow. Tomorrow is a hard, harder course, but it depends on. Uh, it's not always um, the legs that uh, that pay. It's it's your brain and the way you race the race, and and. And if you have less ambition to winning but more to survive, it's perhaps slightly easier to, to stay in the group and get yourself in a position at the end where you might change your ambitions. So let's, uh, let's take a look at tomorrow's stage. It's from Garnish to Garnish and it is 111.1 kilometer. Um, it's, it, they have some, some really, really hard climbs in it. It's, it's longer than today. Um, but the longer is not because that's that's not the reason why it's so hard. No, no, the the, the climbs are uh, more challenging in tomorrow's stage. So uh, that will that's the first challenge. And then of course it's the accumulation of fatigue from three days racing. Whilst yesterday's stage was only um, was only a short one, it is the accumulation of fatigue. Interestingly, the. the um, it's a similar layout to today's stage with a, uh, a long loop first and then five laps of a, of a shorter circuit. Um, again, that shorter circuit is um, around 10 kilometers. But the Queen of the... There are, uh, and the same as today's stage, the, um, the first Queen of the Mountains GPM is uh, on the bigger circuit and then the remaining two GPMs are on, um, are on the finishing circuit which as I say is done five times. Last year Cassia Neriadoma won, um, won the stage by over 40 seconds um, ahead of uh, Katrin Garfoot and um, it will be interesting to see if a breakaway can do it again um, in tomorrow's stage. Um, I think we're due for some even better weather tomorrow with sunshine and so 16 to 18 degrees. 16 to 18 degrees that means it's a little warmer than today. Um, the only difference that from the finish that we have from today is that the uh, the finish today was uphill and the, uh, the the finish tomorrow is the last three kilometers is is going down yes yes I just just uh, on a one point there yep van den Bos and Bulls Dolmans just uh, led the uh, remaining group over the line And uh, it seems to be that that's all the time for the today that we have. Um, make sure you tune in tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Thank you very much. And we will see you tomorrow afternoon for uh, um, in our shorts in the uh, lovely Luxembourg weather. Thank you.